Consumer prices posted their biggest gain in nearly one and a half years in June. According to the Labor Department, the so-called core consumer price index, which excludes food and energy, rose by 0.3 percent. That was more than expected, and it followed four straight monthly gains. Now, food and energy are often excluded because those prices are considered volatile on a month-to-month -month basis. But it's also the stuff we pay for every day, including things like coffee. It's increasing, like everything's increasing because salaries are increasing, but it, it goes with the, it's, it's like gas, you need it. As a college student, I think it's a little bit like yikes when you realize that, oh, it's like five bucks for like this much coffee. So it's a little like you have to cut back. Yeah, price went up significantly. I remember when coffee was 50 cents a cup. A medium at Dunkin' Donuts is 2.85. If that goes to like four dollars and something, I don't think I would do it. I really haven't paid attention to the pricing. Uh, it's kind of a necessary evil. I love coffee, and whatever goes up, I'm just gonna deal with it. So some people are seeing inflated prices at their local coffee shops, but the government data and the Fed say that inflation remains tame. So who has it right? Bob Brusk is with us tonight. He's chief economist at Fact and Opinion Economics. Uh, Bob, first of all, welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. You know, there's that old saying that people will always complain about the price of bread and gasoline, and in this case, coffee. But is there an especially glaring disconnect these days between what we are paying on an everyday basis and these tame inflation data reports that we get from the government and the Fed? I, I don't think so. I think the problem, though, is that uh, people tend to focus on prices when they go up. And I think the other problem is that it's a low inflation environment. People's incomes don't go up very much. So when your income isn't going up very much and prices start going up, you really begin to notice it and it, and it hurts. So, Bob, what impact do you think it will have? I mean, we heard some people say that if prices went up too much that they would stop buying. Um, other, other people said they need their coffee, they're going to keep buying. So if indeed it is more noticeable because wages are not going up as fast as they used to. What impact might that have? Well, people can buy beans, grind them at home, and make coffee and carry it to work, and it'll be a lot cheaper. A, a very practical uh, advice there from Bob Bresca. At this point, why is inflation, statistically speaking, from the Federal Reserve and the government as tame as it is right now? You know, uh, uh, Jerome Powell made a rather profound statement today when he said that low unemployment no longer leads to high inflation, which is what we were taught in economics school. Why is that the case now? Yeah, this, uh, this unemployment inflation trade-off known as the Phillips curve is uh, pretty flat. Uh, you say the Phillips curve is dead. Uh, you have low inflation in Japan, you have low inflation in, in Europe, and uh, we have low prices being generated every day out of China, and we have a lot of technology, and we all carry around cell phones that help us to check prices, and all of this really tends to keep prices very low. There's a lot of competition, there's low prices elsewhere in the world, low inflation elsewhere in the world, and uh, incomes aren't going up, and so people check their phones a lot to double check prices when they spend money, and that keeps prices in line. So after Mr. Powell's testimony today, do you think they cut by 25 or 50? I'd be real surprised if they did 50, Sue. I think you're going to get 25, and I think they're going to try to keep uh, the other 25 in their pocket. I, I don't see the case for 50. Bob Bruska with Fact and Opinion Economics. Good to see you, Robert. Thanks for joining Good us Good to tonight. see you, too. Thanks.